Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a suburban house. In this tutorial, I will show you how to make the entire build inside and out, including the garage, front garden, back garden, The house has a hallway, living room, a kitchen, dining room, moving upstairs, we have one bedroom, a slightly larger bedroom, an even slightly larger bedroom, and a bathroom. This house also happens to look good in any colour of terracotta, concrete, and I imagine almost any block that you choose. The plan for this house is to use it to make a suburban street, in combination with some previous cartoon related houses. This is the amount of space required to make the house. And here are some of the materials that we will use to build the house. We will also need all of these as well. Begin by placing five pillow quartz in a row on the ground. One, two, three, four, five. Then extend backwards by one. Place a red terracotta to the right. Destroy in the ground to the right, place an oak plank. Place a spruce door on top and then place two more red terracotta extending right. One, two. Extend forwards by three. One, two, three. Extend up by two. One, two. Extend right by four. One, two, three, four and then all the way down to the ground. We then want to extend backwards by four. One, two, three, four. We then want to place a pillar quartz in front of that block and extend backwards by 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Then extend across the back of the build by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Destroy two rows in the ground to the right, place oak planks in there with spruce doors on top, and then place two more quartz pillar extending right. We then simply want to connect all the way back to the very start of the build, like this. Next, we are going to place six pillar quartz extending backwards from this red terracotta. One, two, three, four, five, six. We will then extend towards the wall, leaving a gap here, which we will then just place a smooth stone in there instead, and then a spruce door on top. On the front of the build, we have a garage. So for the garage, we want to create a door. This is made placing a block of iron here with a tripwire hook in front of it and smooth quartz stairs either side and then on top of the blocks that we have placed. I'm not sure if we can do this or not, but I'm going to place another row just on top. That might interfere, it might not, we'll see. Then what we are able to do is remove all of the empty space that we now have inside of the garage and we can replace all of the grass with smooth stone. Then we can replace all of the grass inside of the rest of the house with oak planks.
Next, we are going to extend this pillar quartz backwards by one, leave a gap, and then place four more, one, two, three, four. We then want to extend this pillar quartz in to the right by one, and we want to leave a gap and then place another pillar quartz. Right here will actually be a staircase, so we're just going to place a set of one, two, three smooth quartz blocks with a smooth quartz stair here on the end. We'll then extend up and back by one, place some smooth quartz, and then another smooth quartz stairs like this. So that should take us up onto the next level if we place another stair here. We'll just leave it like this for now, as the stairs aren't too important until we actually have a floor, but we want to also extend this quartz pillar across like this, and this is the general sort of layout for the house, so I'm quite happy to leave it like this for now. Next, we are going to place a row of seven red terracotta on top of the front left-hand corner of the build. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Extend to the right by four. One, two, three, four. Then extend inwards by one. We then want to extend to the right by four. One, two, three, four, just like this. We then actually want to drop down a block forwards by two. So one, two. We then want to place three glass extending right. One, two, three, and then we want to place a red terracotta, which we can then extend all the way down, just like this. We can also extend this red terracotta, the opposite side of the window down also. We can fill this gap in underneath the window like this. We can also add the beginnings of the roof of the garage. So this is a smooth quartz slab either side of the top of the garage, Extend the slabs forwards and upwards and inwards until they eventually hit this position. Red terracotta, just here. We're then going to extend these slabs backwards, just like this. We actually have to make that window a tad larger, so we're going to extend it down an additional row, just like so. We are also going to place a glass block here. And we are going to connect the red terracottas at the top of the build down, or we're going to connect the red terracottas at the bottom of the build up, I suppose, depends which way you see it. So all the way up, just above the entrance here, we are then going to extend the red terracottas down here, just along the side of the door to give us this. We then want to place a glass block here, and here, with a red terracotta in between, and then three, one, two, three rows of red terracotta on top. Fill this remaining empty space in with a glass block. Next, we are going to create an overhang at the front of the house. The way that we do this is extend this smooth quartz slab here across the front of the build until we overhang the side, just one row. We then want to place a row of smooth quartz stairs above and behind this, connecting to the wall, just like that. A row of grass block above this with spruce trap doors in front and ferns inside of the grass block. Then we can extend the smooth quartz stair across as well, but we can then add an upside down one behind and we can either leave it like this or maybe we can place like a slab here. And do we want to have the slab all the way through? I don't know whether I want to kind of like smooth this off with a row of slabs and then maybe like have the, and then that actually looks fine just at the side. Maybe we want to extend it up just an additional half row. It just looks a little bit more connected that way, I think. But yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good, I think. We also want to create the beginnings of the roofs up here as well. So we are going to place three red terracotta on top of this window and then an additional one just poking up off of the top. Then we are going to place a set of smooth quartz stairs on the left and right sides of this window with a smooth quartz slab on top. Extend all of the slabs and stairs one row forwards just like this with upside down stairs underneath and a solid smooth quartz block just underneath the middle. Then we are going to work over here on this right side. So we should be able to just place red terracotta above this window. And then we are going to place a 
Smooth quartz slab extending up off of the two corners of the window frame, just like this. Extend these slabs forwards and then upwards and inwards until they eventually connect to each other, like so. And then later on these will extend back into the, what I'll call the main roof. We also want to, does it look better to leave this or does it look better to connect the little roof together. I think that it probably looks better to connect it together. We might even be removing, yeah, we're actually going to remove this row of red terracotta here and we will be placing a row of stairs instead connecting here and these slabs will inevitably connect to these stairs. We're not going to do the roof, the actual main roof quite yet, but we do just want to have the outline of it kind of taken care of. And there we go, that's that's looking really good so far. Then come all the way to the front door and place green carpet in front of the door with a birch button to the right, so that's a doorbell. And to the left, I want to place a one by one painting. Something that stands out like that I think is good. And then we also want to hang a lantern. So we're just going to have to place some slabs. So you can hang a lantern or you could take any sort of light block, doesn't really matter which, and you can light up the front door that way. But I still want the lantern for it for a visual effect. So either way, I kind of also do want a plant pot just next to the door. This is this wasn't part of the original plan, but I just really like plant pots for some reason, especially with ferns. I'm on a bit of a fern kick at the moment, as you might be able to tell. But that is pretty much the front of the build as far as we're going to make it now. Coming over onto the right side of the build, we are first of all going to place a row of seven red terracotta on top of this, let's say, quartz pillar. I always reverse those in my mind. I always call it pillar quartz, but on top of this, a row of seven red terracotta. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We then want to extend it right, up, right, up. And then we're going to do the same, but mirrored on the opposite end of the house. So over here, a row of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Left, up, left, up. And then connect all the way over, just like this. We have to place some windows. So window number one is here. We place a red terracotta, two glass to the right, add another row on top, two rows of red terracotta on top of that with a two by two square of glass on top of the terracotta. And all the way over here in the right, we place a red terracotta, two glass extending in, and a row of glass on top. What that then allows us to do is fill in all of these walls with red terracotta. So I'm just starting with the front of the house here like this, and then just moving along to the sides. Perfect. So, the roof for this particular part of the house is a little bit different. We place smooth quartz stairs extending up until we are on top, and maybe not even on top, so like along the sides of this particular part of the house like this. We want to extend them so they overhang the sides of the build like this, and then upside down stairs underneath every single quartz stairs just like so. Then a smooth quartz slab on top of the stairs just like this and then we want to connect together. So it's kind of like a flat roof and it wants to, you'll notice that it's just, I guess it's actually the same height as the rest of the roof. I don't know whether to increase the height of it, we can always choose to alter that a little bit later. But for now, we also just want to kind of like tie it into the small roof that we have here so we can use a mixture of stairs. So it wouldn't be stairs here, we can use a mixture of stairs and slabs, so we'd extend the stairs across here. So ultimately these stairs would actually connect though to the rest of the build. I just want to make sure everything's tied in because it just makes it a lot easier when we do inevitably start building the rest of the roof if we have all of the hard parts covered. So we can extend the slabs backwards and there we go. So it's obvious which blocks are meant to be like quartz blocks or slabs and which blocks are meant to be stairs. This for instance is meant to be a an actual block. And there we go. It's all tied in together rather nicely now and ultimately this peak here will extend back and connect 
But we don't know whether we're going to keep the roof as is. It actually looks really nice like that. Moving on to the back of the house, we are first of all going to mark out all of the windows. This is rather simple. Place a red terracotta here with two glass to the right, one, two. Then place two red terracotta moving right, one, two. Two more glass, one, two. Add another row of glass on top of all of the glass. Then we want to place two rows of red terracotta on top of each one of the windows with two rows of glass on top of the red terracotta. Then, extending right of this window, we place two rows of red terracotta and then two rows of glass right of it. So we have quite a few windows on the back of the build. We then want to extend this row of red terracotta just across the top of the windows and all the way down just like this. Then we can fill in this entire wall with red terracotta. Just like so. And then the roof, we can just extend the back of it just across like this. We can extend all of these stairs blocks at the very least. Then on the final side of the house over here, we can place a red terracotta in this corner with two glass extending right, another row of glass on top. Six red terracotta right of the window, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then two glass extending right, another row on top, and then we can fill this entire wall in with red terracotta. So, it gets a little bit tricky towards the front of the house here. As you can see, the wall on this side of the house doesn't really line up with the wall on that side of the house. So if we extend this smooth quartz slab across the top over here and through here, you can see this is where the wall kind of like wants to begin. So let's extend the roof backwards here and then it will extend out and the roof backwards here, and it will extend out, and the roof just outwards here, so like this. And now you can see we have the same shape as we have on the opposite side. So then we can just add two supporting rows of red terracotta, and we have the same house shape on this side as we do the opposite side now. So we can just add upside down stairs underneath each one of those overhanging stairs with a row of smooth quartz slabs on top, connecting the front and the back of the roof together just like this. Next, we are going to come inside of the house and we are going to mark out the entire floor plan, ground floor and second floor, or first floor. It gets confusing. The floor that isn't the first floor. Wait, you guys get the idea. Anyway, on top of all of the quartz pillar blocks that we have placed along the floor, we then want to place three, one, two, three, red terracotta on top of each of them. One, two, three, one, two, three, etc., etc. And this will create the downstairs walls. We also want to add red terracotta in between the top two blocks so that we are able to just like create doorways. There we go, that is all of the walls pretty much sorted out. Really, really simple stuff. So then we simply want to fill in between that top layer of red terracotta in using oak planks. Then, on the next floor, we want to add a row of quartz pillar, leaving a gap of one from this entire row of red terracotta. We want to place an entire row of quartz pillar, just leaving a gap like this, just across the back. And we also want to place a row of quartz pillar extending from here to here as well. So the second floor floor plan will look a lot like this. You can see that the row of quartz pillar or 
yeah, quartz pillar extends from this wall here right next to the window and we then want to place quartz pillar along these specific red terracotta blocks as well so this is going to be the layout on the second floor so all of the quartz pillar that we have just placed will ultimately become rooms uh, we also want to remove most of if not all of the oak plank blocks just above the stairs just like so uh, we want to remove the red terracotta here, replace it with oak planks, and then the doorways into each room. So like one doorway will be here, and then here, and wherever we have the red terracotta, replace it with oak planks. We will have a doorway here and here, and then we just have to replace those blocks just like this. Then what we are able to do is place one, two, three rows of red terracotta, on top of every single quartz pillar that we have placed so we will have three rows just on top of every single quartz pillar We also want to connect the tops of the door frames together wherever we have them. We have four different ones that we have to do. And then we are simply just going to fill the ceilings in with... What do we want to use for ceilings, guys? Do we, do we just want to use more planks? You can kind of use anything for the ceiling. So we will then just connect all of those rows together with oak planks. Maybe, maybe we will leave the hallways. So I think that we... Okay, so this is what we'll do. We'll let the hallways be a little bit higher than the rest of the house. But the rooms... Uh, we'll, we'll have those ceilings be oak planks. So it'll kind of be interesting. You'll be... It'll kind of, you'll feel the difference as you're walking around. The only small change that we will have to make is that we will have to raise the height of certain rows of red terracotta to reach the walls but that's perfectly okay and it'll just be kind of interesting so all of these will just have to be raised up and there we go that's kind of cool and you can even add some additional upside down stairs like here and then yeah there we go that that's perfect i wonder if we would it be cool to kind of add like a faux like so we kind of get the effect that the roof is like coming in so it'd be like here in the halls is that, is that kind of cool or is it not kind of cool? I think that that's kind of cool. So we kind of got the feeling that the roof is like coming in somehow. I, I really like that. But regardless, once you have made all of those changes, all we simply have to do is just fill all of the remaining space just at the top of the house in using smooth quartz slab. Next, we are going to create a driveway by removing these three blocks in front of the garage door all the way out to the edge of the grid, replacing the very end of the grid with stone stairs, and then filling the remaining empty space in using grey concrete, like so. We then want to remove either side of the driveway, and also the first two rows of the grid extending all the way over to the left and right. And replace all of these blocks with smooth stone. Then we are going to remove three rows in front of this window. So like one, two, three, like this. And extend across and replace all of this with smooth stone also. We also want to remove up the side of the house, extending all the way along the back here. We also want to remove two entire rows, extending off of the back of the house, and we can replace everything that we have just destroyed with smooth stone as well. Then, 
we are going to create some fences. I think that the easiest way to do this is come all the way back to the very front of the build and place a spruce plank right here and extend all the way along the back of the grid or all the way to the back of the grid and then along the back of the grid and then all the way forwards. Actually, how far do we want it to be on this side? Actually, what we're going to do is connect it to the very back of the house like this so we have a little bit of variance. Then add another row of spruce planks on top of the spruce planks that we have just placed. We then want to add a row of spruce fence on top of the spruce planks. We are then going to place a row of podzol along the inside of the back of the fence. We are going to then place large ferns inside of the podzol with iron bars in front of the ferns, just like this. Then we are going to remove, starting from here, all of this grass extending back to the iron bars and then all of the remaining empty space all the way to here. And we will fill all of this in with smooth stone. We actually want to create kind of like a garden gate. So we're going to place two spruce planks here and extend the fence across. We then need to grab our spruce doors and place a spruce door here. We are then going to remove the row of grass block that sits against the fence and replace all of the grass with pods on. And then place ferns in the pods on. And then along the right side of the build, we actually want to do a similar thing. So remove all of this grass against the driveway, extending to the house. Replace all of that with podzol and then ferns inside of the podzol. Then we want to place oak leaves on the remaining portion of the grid, extending along the side of the house, all the way against the garden wall slash fence here. Coming back to the front of the build, we are going to remove all of the grass block that we have for a front lawn and replace it with lime terracotta. We then want to come to the back of the build and do the exact same thing. So remove all of the grass block, not including the grass underneath the iron bars. We'll leave that alone and replace all of that grass with lime terracotta. Coming to the back garden, we are first of all going to add a small picnic bench. So this is two spruce stairs over here in this patio area with spruce fence in front, spruce stairs on the opposite side and spruce trap doors on top of the fence. Then two furnaces extending backwards from the picnic table with a detector rail on one and an item frame on the other. Then over here on the actual grass, we then want to place a paddling pool. So this is a prismarine brick stairs, leaving a gap of one from pretty much everything with a smooth red sandstone stairs behind, prismarine stair, and then we're going to loop back around, sandstone, prismarine, sandstone, prismarine, sandstone in a circle like this. Remove the center block, place prismarine brick stairs in there instead, and then we can fill the middle of this in carefully with water. So until it's, I think that might be as still as it's going to get, question mark. Yeah, I think that we'll leave it like that. That's perfect. And then we can just add a couple of chairs to the side of this. So a spruce stair here, scaffolding, spruce stair. You can even add like a, a plant part or like a candle or something. So something to represent like a drink or something just next to this. You could even add like a parasol, but I think I'm going to leave it just like this. I think that that's fine. And there we go, that's, that's pretty good. That's a good looking back garden. 
With the entire outside of the house made, we can now head inside and work on the interior. Starting by closing the front door. We don't want it to get chilly. Next, we are going to remove these two blocks underneath the stairs and place a chest and tripwire hook in their place with a spruce door in front of this. We're then going to remove just, well, that was silly. We're going to remove around the stairs and place brown carpet instead of the oak planks. And then we're just going to place that door back. Then we are going to place a painting on this wall facing the door, like so, just a little one by one, and an armor stand right here. This is the hallway. Moving into this small room. First of all, we want to place a scaffolding in this corner with a flower pot on top of it and a fern inside of it. Two smooth quartz stairs next to it with end rods next to the stairs and a brown glazed terracotta on top of the end rods. We can then place brown carpet in front of these stairs or alternatively, maybe we will build the brown wall into the floor with note blocks facing these stairs and we then want to have a one by two painting facing or above the note blocks. Then underneath this window, we will place bookshelves and this is where the carpet comes back in handy. We'll place brown carpet on top of the bookshelves. And this is the living room. So moving into the largest room of the house now, we are first of all going to make the kitchen. Place a row of smooth quartz blocks against this wall extending to the window and then against this window here we will place two tripwire hooks and also item frames behind the tripwire hooks. We will then place two blocks of iron here next to this counter space that we have created with stone buttons in front, furnace to the left with a detector rail on top. Cauldron to the left of the furnace with a tripwire hook above it and a smooth quartz block next to the cauldron. We then want to create an island in between all of this. So we essentially maintain a gap of one in front of all of the counter space and appliances that we have just placed. And we create a small island to kind of give it a rectangular look. It's kind of a square actually. Is it a square? No, it's a rectangle. Anyway, we want to place a brewing stand here, a flower pot here, a couple of flower pots here and then item frames here. That's absolutely perfect. And do feel free to occupy the item frames with food stuff. And then I'm, I'm actually not sure whether I want to add shulker boxes onto the wall at, at the very least above this site. I, I don't know. So maybe like here and here. Does that look better? Does it look worse? Is it better with just this? Do we need a lantern on this counter space? You tell me. I think that that actually does look markably better. So we could even flare the end of the island with an upside down set of stairs like this. And you could even hang, say, like a towel or something off of the end of it. So like in the form of banners. I think that that looks pretty good. Maybe even like a hook or something here, just to add a small minor bit of detail. In addition to this, we could kind of add like a, a rug or rug's the wrong word, kind of like a floor mat, just like at the back door, I think would look good as well. We are also going to add a bookshelf just underneath this back window here. So bookshelf with brown carpet on top. That's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm very happy with this side of the room, which turns our attention onto this side. So on this side of the room, we are first of all going to come to this door, move to the right of it by two. So one, two. We will then leave a gap in front of this. So a, a one, two row gap. We then want to place one, two, three smooth quartz block like this, add another row along the side of it, and that is a table. Perfectly sort of centered around, uh, it's not centered, but that's our table. We then want to place smooth quartz stairs along the side of our table, kind of like this. So I, I kind of want to offset the chairs a little bit. So maybe like one here, for instance, and then maybe like one here and then here. I think that that, that's not offset. There we go. That's looking good. So the chairs are kind of like all shuffled around a little bit. I think that that looks a little bit better than them all uniformly sat perfectly. 
opposite each other. But anyway, we are going to add some flower parts, item frames, and a lantern to the table. We're then going to remove around the edge of the table and place brown wool in here instead, just so that the table kind of like sticks out a bit. And I'm kind of contemplating adding upside down stairs to the ends of the table, kind of like how we did there, just to give it a little bit more shape. I think that that looks a little bit better. This does require us to add a little bit more brown wool instead, but I, I kind of like how that looks. Against this wall, we want to place some paintings. So these are one by one paintings, one here and one here. I'm so glad that those are my two favorites. And there we go, that is pretty much the entire room made. You could stuff a bookcase here as well if you wanted to. I'm not sure that it would really improve the room much, but maybe it would, maybe it does. Maybe it has. Something's also telling me to add a floor lamp in the corner as well, so the end rods in the brown terracotta. I think that it's just kind of like the right amount of detail in here now. I, I think before it was too little and now is just the correct amount. I really like the this room. Next, we are going to move into the final room of the house, which is the garage. So in the garage, we don't really have too much. We are going to place a crafting table, smithing table, chest, couple of spruce trap doors, Stone cutter on one, grindstone above the other, and then maybe just hang a lantern to kind of complete this. Maybe even just against this wall, so it's not everything's kind of like stacked here. There is actually enough room to place a car in here and in the driveway, which I'll show you a little bit later on. I'll show you how to make a car. It's incredibly quick. It only takes like 30 seconds. But that's the garage complete. With the entire downstairs made, we can now head upstairs and work on... Well, the upstairs. First of all, we are going to add some spruce fence along the top of the stairs here in the so that we now have a banister. And I think that we will either, I guess we've got two options. We can either add a potted plant just above the stairs there, or we could just remove the block entirely. I'll let you guys decide which one you want to do. I'm going with the plant. Next, we are going to add some pictures on the wall. So these are just some good old one by one. So one can go here. And then here, how do, how do we want to have them? So like here and here, I think, will look good. So one here and then one there. That's perfect. And yeah, we'll just have them against that wall. We won't have them against this wall. Um, every room wants to have a door, by the way. So we'll just place all of these whilst we're at it. And we could have some lights somewhere, couldn't we? Maybe... Would, would it look silly to have like a lantern surrounded by spruce signs? So this is going to be, is this? No, oh, we can place it like this, perfect. I thought we might have had to crouch or something, but there we go. We've created a light fitting. That looks that looks pretty good, actually. Uh, I'll turn, we could even have it hang down with a chain. Okay, okay I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to investigate this one second. I think that that looks even better. Uh, feel free to do whichever one. I can't get both of us in here. Feel free to do whichever one you think looks best. It looks like I've just had a bright idea. So the first room we are going to decorate is this one. As we hit the top of the stairs, it is this room that faces us directly on the left. So in here is a small bedroom. Place a chest in the corner with a tripwire hook above it and an armor stand next to this. We then want to place a double spruce door in front of what we have just made with spruce trap doors above this. We could even have, if we wanted to, we could like place chests above all of this. So we have like additional overhead storage that doesn't really work. And then we can place trap doors above the actual doors. And I think that that looks a little bit cleaner. We can then place a row of bookshelves directly to the left of this. And it all looks nice and built in with double white bed just on the end here. And we can then place spruce signs in front of the bed like so. And then on this wall, we can have a TV. So that is just like a two by two painting or a two by one, whichever one you prefer the look of. And could we add some carpet in here as well? Maybe just like in front, maybe just here, maybe just in front of the bookshelves. Uh, unfortunately, you can't really place it anywhere else unless we ditch the spruce signs at the end of the bed, but I don't think that I want to do that. But regardless, this is this room complete, unless you want to add some uh, little small touches just above the bed. So that'd be like a 
plant pot. So maybe just like a plant pot or maybe just like a lantern, something like that if you wanted to. Next, we are going to head over onto the opposite side of the house and we are going to make another bedroom. In this corner, we will place a chest with a tripwire hook above it and an armor stand left of the chest. Double spruce door in front of the armor stand and the chest and two spruce trap doors flipped up on top of each other left of this and above to create a wardrobe. Next, we are going to place a row of bookshelves just in front of this window with brown carpet on top of the bookshelves, a double white bed in front of this, and then on the wall against this, a TV. So we're just going to go for a one by two. That doesn't look very TV-like actually, so let's go for a two by two instead. It still doesn't look very TV-like, but it is a little bit better. I don't know whether note blocks would actually improve this as well, just like underneath, so that this is all nice and boxed in. And I'm actually thinking, I didn't have this originally, but I'm thinking a small arcade machine. So like a yellow concrete here, here, one by one here, lever here, stone button here, and then we have like a small OK machine. It's kind of like a cool little detail to add to the bedroom. And there's not really too much room for anything else, so we might just leave this. Or we could create a set of shelves very similar to how we did in the other room. So maybe like here, lantern. This We might be getting into like over detailed territory though. I think that that might be. So we'll just we'll just leave that as is. Or maybe we could hang a couple of flower pots here just from the ceiling. That looks a little bit silly. I think that we'll just leave it as is. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's move on. What about a rug in the middle of the floor? What about just like a remove that button there and then we can have like a blue rug. Does that help? I don't know why I can't just be happy. So maybe like just above this bed here maybe the lantern flower pot, fern combination. Is this too much? I, I don't know. I, I kind of do like it though. I don't think it's too much. I think that it kind of brings the bedroom together. I wish there was something that we could put here, but there, there really isn't. I think that we're just going to have to move on across the hall into the master bedroom. So in the corner here, we are going to place two spruce planks with upside down spruce stairs above. White beds in front of the planks and spruce signs in front of the end of the bed. In this corner, an armor stand, next to it a chest, tripwire hook, above it, double spruce door, above or in front of what we have just made, two flipped up spruce trapdoors to the left of the wardrobe with trapdoors across the top of the wardrobe. We then all the way over here on this opposite wall, we are going to fill this entire wall in with bookshelves. Then we are going to add a central triple shelf right here with a couple of flower pots and a lantern. It's easiest if we stand on something. So fill the flower pots with flowers. I'm going with ferns. Who would have guessed? And there we have our lantern. Then against this wall here, we are going to place two smooth quartz blocks with a pot on one side and an item frame and a brush in the other. Then we are going to place a chair in the form of a spruce stair. And that rhymed. We will grab a spruce sign, loom, light blue banner, white dye, light gray dye and green carpet. So either side of the stair, we will add signs to make it a chair. Round again, throw down loom, open it up, light blue banner in there with white dye. First of all, place the bend pattern, then apply a gradient pattern. It doesn't matter which one. I think that that one's my favorite though, the base gradient. Then light gray dye in there and apply the bourgeois pattern. Throw that on the wall, hanging down to create a double set of mirrors. Then we are simply just going to add a row of green carpet in front of the bookshelves, just like this. And there we go, that's perfect. If you wanted to, we could add like a, a stair here just so that we can kind of like sit and read our books, but who, <laughs> who reads books? Moving into the final room of the house, all the way over here on the opposite side of the house once again, we are going to, first of all, make a bath. Oh, it's it, th this is the bathroom. I guess you, you could have probably figured that out when I told you we were making a bath, but anyway, we will place one, two, three smooth quartz stairs extending across this wall in the corner here cauldron spruce trap door above it green banner next to this then a lever 
and a tripwire hook against the back wall of the bath, maybe a flower pot here on the edge. On this wall, we will place one, two, three smooth quartz blocks and above the center here, a tripwire hook, item frame in front, flower pot next to it, maybe on the opposite side as this. We could have a little bit of light in here with the use of a lantern just on this corner. And then if you want, you can have a mirror protruding, I guess, <laughs> kind of, it doesn't matter that it's kind of like blending together with the tap. I think that it still looks good. And there we go. If you wanted to kind of keep the brown sort of consistent nature, we could add a bath mat here just in front, um, brown carpet. But I, I think that this is looking pretty good. And well, that's, that's the bathroom complete. Last thing I'll show you how to make is a car. So all the way over here in the drive, we are going to place a row of four of your favorite color of wool. One, two, three, four. Add another row of wool to the right of it and a row of wool extending in either one row from the back or one row from the front and place glass in front of it. Add carpet matching the wool for the roof and then on the front of the car add glow item frames and on the side of the car either add buttons for wheels or alternatively oak trap doors work as well. Both actually work nicely, so I'll let you choose which one. Coming into the garage now, we are just going to add a car in here too. So one, two, three, four wall, add another row to the side, row here, glass here, green carpet on top, button here and here, boom, perfect, second car. And with that final detail added, ladies and gentlemen, we have officially completed this tutorial. However, this video is not over. We must now take our house and add it into our city. And we have something special planned for this house. So the idea here, ladies and gentlemen, is that we first of all have to alter the outer suburbs of the city a little bit. We are going to use the South Park Street as one half of a suburban street and then we will use a combination of different colors of the house that we have just made for the opposite side of the street and that is going to be kind of like an entire suburbs and we're going to leave the street open a little bit i'm kind of thinking that we can connect this end of the city into the modern suburbs you might be able to see how it kind of isn't too far away but that is something for later on i'd highly recommend rebuilding this house or repasting this house if you have world at it and making multiples of these as i mentioned earlier this looks great in pretty much almost any color i've went for a whole terracotta palette here but any concrete bricks would look good a bunch of different stuff guys experiment experiment with this it will look fantastic and this is the end result of our hard work i hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are looking for more things to make by me check out the mini city builds playlist down below in the description for everything that you can have and will not see on the screen right now we have city builds video game builds movie builds cartoon builds you name it we have it check the playlist down below Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.